again at 30 years old. And here we go. The pro debut of Kasir Mazi Goldston. He is in the blue trunks with white trim. Isaiah the Lion Varnell you, in the Keep black and white trunks. Christina Poncher and Chris Algieri here with you. Welcome to Fight Night in the Bubble. Right. Right away we see we've got the Southpaw versus Watch Orthodox hold. matchup. Kasir Goldston, the Southpaw with his right foot in front. Right away you see him stepping to the outside of the foot of Varnell. Exactly as you should. Good chopping right hook. I mentioned earlier some of the accolades for Goldston as an amateur. Uh, he's a two-time member of Team USA. He won 13 national championships, collected six medals overseas, and he won 109 of his 117 amateur bouts. Incredibly successful amateur career and won three consecutive National Junior Olympic titles from 2015 to 2017. And already you can see the poise you know, when you see these amateurs with these big amateur backgrounds, especially guys international level competition, they're just different in there. And you see that in, in Goldston right now. Watch hold behind the head. Keep that head up. Keep the head up. Let's go. Isaiah Varnell is a two-year pro. He's been a veteran at welterweight, 147 pounds. He made his debut uh, 10 years to Goldston Sr. when he was 27 years old. And his last fight uh, in January of this year, 2020, he lost a third round knockout against Luis Lopez. So looking to get back in the win column tonight is the three and two fighter, Isaiah Varnell. Mazi using a nice south, southpaw jab, doing that kind of in and out amateur style, trying to make his man reach, which he's done quite well, and coming back with that jab over the top. Now you notice, you see Goldson, he's moving to his left, not generally what you want to see from the southpaw, but I do believe that he's setting up his, his check right hook, because he does have a very good right hook to the head and to the body, and it seems like he's uh, he's looking ahead for that, for that shot. Varnell welcome, he, welcoming him to the pros a little bit with some of those body shots in the clinch. And for Varnell, not really using the jab with much authority. Kind of just looking to land those power shots on the inside and Gold, Goldson doing a good job of keeping that distance. And, and he has some great head movement too, something that we saw in some of his amateur highlights. He hasn't really had the show. It's from the Varnell corner, round two. This one's scheduled for four in the welterweight division, although both guys coming in Right under 143 pounds, a much lower than the welterweight limit of 147. So it'll be interesting to see where Goldston kind of ends up. He moves on down to 140 pounds as his career progresses, which probably makes more sense at this point at just 17 years old than making the jump up to welterweight. Just comparing their body types right now, he does look a little small for the weight class. Um, I know, as you mentioned earlier, Varnell is kind of coming down from welterweight. But also, he's 17 years old, so you don't know how his body is going to fill in Stop. and where he's really truly going to end up. Watch your feet. You're stepping on each other's feet. Watch that. Huh. Really oh. interesting. Remarkable. Yeah, I mean, those are kind of the nuances that happen when you have an orthodox and a southpaw fighter. I mean, they battle for that lead outside foot position and usually just kind of work through it as Vic Dratcher just stepped in to warn them. Oh. Yeah, normally, you don't see that unless there's like very blatant stepping on the foot. Good in and out there by, by Goldston. Oh. Right. Oh, hey. Watch it. Watch it. Mm. It's going to happen again. Right. It wasn't that bad. Let's go. <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah, I think it's one thing that Brunel has to do. He's got to make it rough in there. He's sure. not going to outscore, outpoint. Um, a, you know, a guy with this level of amateur experience, he's got to use his man strength. He's got 13 years on him. 30-year-old body versus 17-year-old body. Um, he's got to get on him, use his body weight, use his strength. And get a little dirty if necessary. Uh, Orlando Salido knew a little something about that when he fought a, a guy named <laughs> Vasily Lomachenko in only his second pro fight. Uh, welcome to, welcome to, lost, exactly, yeah. welcome to the pro ranks. I, I'm not saying that Parnell should go in there and start 
hitting it with low blows. But to your point, let your hands go a little bit, rough them up, get on the inside, hold, because you're not going to win this fight just moving around the outside. Yeah, especially when you got a guy who's so, who's so quick, so much faster than more technical than yourself. Nice right hand got in there from Bono, and then Goldston answers with a right hand of his own to the body. Mozzie starting to settle down a little bit, standing in front, let his hands go. First round, really, he really just boxed on the outside. He's picked up the punch output here in round two, particularly in this last minute. And I spoke to Coach K. Karoma. He's not the trainer of Mozzie, but obviously being a part of Team USA for so long. Seven shots um, back. He said, you know, Mozzie's one of those, you know, slick southpaw type boxers. He, he likes to feel out his opponent. He's very, like you said, very composed. He's not going to rush. And, and he does like to showcase his skills. And he expected him to do that tonight. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Yeah, he's a bit of a cutie. That's what, that's what we call guys like that. Those kind of slick southpaw. You know, step aside, hit you, walk, walk around. Our co-main event. And our main event later tonight, Javier Molina taking on Jose Pedraza. Round three, scheduled for four. Christina Ponte, Chris Algeria here with you. And a nice right hand from Varnell to start round four. Or excuse me, round three. Varnell may be sensing that he needs to pick up the pace a little bit here. That's the thing about a four-rounder. It's very easy to get behind the eight ball. You have a feel-out round, you lose round two, you're already in draw territory. Don't turn your head. Next time, point, guys. That's one thing about uh, when, you got, when you got fighters talking to each other, when you're in the bubble and there's no crowd, you can really hear what they're saying. We sure can. These guys uh, from, from before the opening bell were jawing at each other. And Vic said he would take a point away for the next morning of, about hitting behind the head. So we'll see if that comes to fruition in the last five minutes of this fight if we get that far. Frank has signed a ton of young talent, uh, particularly this summer. And a uh, friend and, and uh, another Team USA member, Jahai Tucker, is coming up next, making his pro debut also in the welterweight division, uh, taking on DeAndre Anderson. So he's I'm sure back there getting warmed up, but keeping an eye, if he could, on, on his friend and Mozzie. How fun to make your be on the same part, too. Yeah. And also another New York fighter decided to. Uh to see some more of these East Coast guys making these top ranked cards. Both uh, Jay Prince signees. He's got a nice stable he's built there. And this is kind of a tough matchup too. I mean, even when I was talking to Coach K, he said the commissioner there in Nevada has been real cautious about um, you know, approving different matches and things like that. And he doesn't want these crazy upsets or these crazy mismatches in right. pro debuts for these guys, considering their amateur experience. And he's in here with a 30-year-old man who's three and two with two knockouts. So not a not an 0 and 15 guy that you're you're fighting in, in TJ off TV to kind of build your record. I mean, he's in there with a guy with a winning record and, and who's you know got, got some experience. Yeah. He's got a couple knockouts. Excellent point. You no, know, it's, it's it's a dangerous thing putting a, 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 a first time pro debut against a guy with knockouts. You never know. You never know how these guys are going to take a shot. Other Tyshawn Goldston in the corner. And I'll tell you, that's a good feeling. That first win under your belt. Let's see if he can close the show here. We'll see. Round number four. Break. Break. Good check, right hook over the top there. Had Barnell falling into him. That's one thing about these amateurs who come with that, that big background. Like we said earlier, they're poised. They stay calm, they're relaxed. But these are four-round fights. You don't have that much time. It, it almost is a, is a detriment to be so calm and poised in such a short amount of time. It's that balance between not getting over-anxious and, and calming yourself down and being poised, but also doing enough to make sure you're getting the work in and you're getting the experience. You're doing enough to get the rounds 
in the judges' eyes as well. And doing damage, but not in the amateurs anymore. The pro ranks is about doing damage. I mean, if I was Barnell and I'm trying to win the fight, I'd be letting my hands go a little bit more. Because at this point, you're down likely three rounds to none. And if you want to try to knock him out, you have two on your record in just five fights. Go for it. Let your hands go. He's a little too cautious for my liking right now. Yeah, he's got to come to win. He's keeping the gun in the holster, as they say. He's, uh, and I think the speed, the quickness, the counter punching of, of Mozzie is, is really keeping keeping his hands at home base. And as you alluded to, you know, this is, this is not a walkover punch fighter, a pushover type fighter, which a lot of times, often with the times you see a pro debut. How do you like that shot with his head down that, that overhand left up the top? Yeah, that's, that's something actually I saw in his tapes. Um, he straightened it out a lot in this fight. He's, he's landed, he doubles it up sometimes. I really just like how he gets his head off the line. He moves out to that side. Offense and defense together. And even there, the yep. lateral movement and then stepping out off the line. Nice shoulder movement, that's that upper body rhythm. Coming in, All right. Sure. And you can even use that kind of defensive posture like that in order to hide your first move and, and land your offense. And you get the feeling with, with Mozzie that he's finding his rhythm now. And unfortunately, there's only 10 seconds to go in round four, but he could probably go a couple more. Yeah, no, he's fought at a very measured he, pace. He absolutely has. Yeah, like you said, he's, he's finding his rhythm. You can drive it now. And he knew it. Sticking the tongue out, but... Uh, Mazi. Well, I like Farnell's confidence. <laughs> he's up there, he's like, yeah, I did it. Like, let's see. We will see with the ever so dapper Mark Chinook. Take it away, Mark. After four rounds here inside the MGM Grand, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Max DeLuca has the bout 40 36. Eric Cheek and Chris Miglior have the bout 39 37. For your winner by unanimous decision, Kasir Masi Goldstein. Kassir Goldson improves his professional record now to 1-0, winning all four rounds on one of the judges' scorecards and three of the four.